Today, House Democrats voted to admit Washington, D.C. as the 51st state, despite some truly dumb objections from Republicans who have spent the week freaking out about everything from D.C. statehood to voting rights to the Green New Deal. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. I have to say, it is such a relief to not have to care about what Donald Trump says or does anymore. I mean, he did a sit-down interview with Sean Hannity earlier this week, and we haven't mentioned it once or played a single clip from it. If he was still president, we would have had to cover it, but now we could just ignore it. It's the same kind of freedom I felt once I gave myself permission to stop caring about all the various plot lines in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It used to be that when I watched one of those movies, I was trying to retrace every decision Doctor Strange made in the time loop that somehow led to the blip and the Avengers defeating Thanos. And then, you know what? I gave myself permission to just sit back, relax, and enjoy Loki's antics. Oh, you trickster, you! I cannot wait to see what kind of goofs you get up to with Owen Wilson. Although, as much as I love Tom Hiddleston, I really wish mid-2000s Vince Vaughn was playing Loki. I'm just not sure I can trust you, Loki. Buddy, 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 you're breaking my heart here. I would never lie to you. Sure, I would embellish for effect. Sure, have I told a fib here and there? Guilty as charged. And if that's a crime, by all means, lock me up and throw away the key. But to lie to you, no, not ever, not ever, buddy. All right, I'll give you the tesseract, Loki, but I'm vouching for you here. Bring it back. <laughs> even when I scroll Twitter and Steve Stills from that interview, it's a little shocking to remember that he even exists and that he still looks like this. I mean, presidents are supposed to look more relaxed once they're out of office. Trump looks like he's been up all night trying to find the sailboat in a magic eye poster. Meanwhile. Obama somehow looks 10 years younger. He's cruising around with his shirt unbuttoned like the CEO of a music festival, and he's doing a podcast with Bruce Springsteen. Soon he's going to start taking over the little Steven parts in Glory Days. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess that's the difference between being a former president who's beloved and a former president who's under criminal investigation. Although I will say, before Trump even answered a single question, and I know I said we're gonna ignore it, but I'm like a moth to a flame, baby. Plus, it's what the audience wants, right, you guys? Thanks for having my back, base. Where was I? Oh, yeah, before Trump answered a single question, the interview was already off to an absolutely ludicrous start when Hannity said this. All right, so I know a lot of people that are around you every day. This is what they're all telling me. You are working as hard as you did when you were in the White House, except you play a little golf more. That you, you're keeping an insane schedule, seven days a week, you, you really don't stop. Man, there are softballs and then there are tee balls, but that was like Hannity put the ball on the other side of the fence and then told Trump to walk around the bases like he hit a dinger. You did it, sir, not me. Now let's see that home run trot. And what was the next question? I heard there were a lot of behind the scenes pranks at the White House. Oh yeah, one time we tied a chicken nugget to a Roomba and made Eric Chase it for three days. It wasn't all laughs, though. He came back. But as that clip proves, as much as a relief it is to not have to cover or care about Trump anymore, the Republican Party he left behind is still very much committed to both the ideology and the performance of Trumpism. The paranoia, conspiracy theories, racism, and lies about everything from coronavirus to climate change to voting reforms to D.C. statehood. In fact, in some cases, they're still pushing some of Trump's trademark lies. One's you may have even forgotten about, like his debunked and dangerous claim that hydroxychloroquine can cure coronavirus. Remember that oldie from summer 2020? Well, it's back thanks to former Housing Secretary Ben Carson, who resurrected the hydroxychloroquine lie on Fox News this week. And even Fox had a hard time letting him get away with it. We, as a nation, for instance, wanted to be focused only on one thing, vaccinations. There were people telling us, you know, there are ivermectin and uh, other kinds of things that work. Hydroxychloroquine. Because uh, a number of medical experts well. have looked at that, doctor, as you know, and, and, and poo-pooed that connection with hydroxychloroquine. You know, you just said, you know, a bunch of people have poo-pooed the hydrochloroquine, but the evidence is there. It's nice to have a marker that shows exactly when Ben Carson fell asleep. It's like when your girlfriend falls asleep during Law & Order and says, hey, was it the husband? No, they ruled the husband out five minutes in. Also, God forgive me, I really don't want this to be my primary focus, but I do love that Cavuto inadvertently got Carson to repeat the word poo-poo. You never want to hear a doctor use the word poo-poo, unless they're a gastroenterologist. <laughs> Where's the rim shot? Is Fred not here today? Because we needed the rim shot there. Okay, but can we just get him to record a rim shot so we have something to play? Do we have anything on hand for the end of that joke? Okay. 
All right, I'll do it again. You never want to hear a doctor use the word poo poo unless they're a gastroenterologist. Shots, 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 shots. Why that? Oh, right, 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 because we already used our entire music allowance when we played it on Monday. Fine, but that's the last time I want to hear it. Also, can we go back to this? The evidence is there. No, it's not. Where are you getting this evidence from? Who are you talking to? It cures everything. Coronavirus, hemorrhoids, joint pain, sleep deprivation. It even acts as a steroid to help you build muscle mass so you can fight a Tifa when they come to your door and give them a little one-two. Or you can become an athlete and win the Super Bowl with dumbers. <laughs> you know, usually we film late night in New York, but on Thursdays we do it from Callback City, baby. We get five cents back for every joke we recycle. Happy Earth Day. Anyway, the point is the GOP is still very much committed to the toxic, paranoid, authoritarian ideology of Trumpism. People like Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene are perfect examples. Is President Biden prepared to hold a climate summit with world leaders and as progressives, led by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, reintroduced the Green New Deal? Marjorie Taylor Greene, who craves the tension, challenged AOC to a debate on Twitter, which for AOC is not even worth responding to. It's like George Foreman getting challenged to a boxing match by DJ Qualls, Qualback. But Green persisted, <laughs> posting a photo of herself yesterday, talking to AOC on the House floor in a tweet that said, I'm glad I ran into you today, AOC, to plan our debate about the Green New Deal. After I finish reading all 14 pages like we agreed, I'll schedule time for our debate. First of all, I doubt AOC agreed. Second, you want us to be impressed that you can read 14 pages? My cable bill is longer than that. The script for this segment is usually like three times as long, much to Shoemaker's chagrin. That's right, his chagrin. You see, as a producer, it's Shoemaker's job to make sure the entire show fits into an hour and that it starts on time and, you know, works as a coherent television show. And every day we do a hilarious prank where we tell him closer look will be a normal length. And then when Sal turns it in, it's got nine different tangents about TV shows from the 80s, and it's longer than the final episode of MASH. Suicide may be painless, but cutting his jokes hurts Sal deeply. You see, Suicide is Painless is the name of the MASH song, which doesn't have lyrics, but it does have lyrics in the original MASH movie, which is from 1970, which is also where Shoemaker's from. Oh, and he's looking chagrined again. <laughs> anyway, Green helpfully followed up this morning with another tweet where she informed us that she had, in fact, read the bill and was now ready for the debate, tweeting, I read your 14-page communist manifesto, AOC. Looking forward to debating you. Okay, thanks for keeping us posted. Green's just dying to grab some of AOC's spotlight. She reminds me of the doorman in my old building who always said, you should have me on your show. A lot of crazy stories happen here. One time a package came, but it was for a different address. <laughs> but Green's a perfect avatar of Trumpism because it's all performance. I mean, she admitted she hadn't even read the bill before she challenged AOC to a debate. That's the state of the modern GOP. We saw it on display yet again this week during hearings on voting rights. For example, former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams testified in the Senate about Georgia's draconian new voter suppression laws, Louisiana Senator John Kennedy challenged Abrams to list off her objections to the bill, and you could tell he was not ready for her to actually have such a detailed, substantive list. Tell me specifically, just give me a list of the provisions that you objected. I object to the provisions that remove access to the right to vote that shorten the federal runoff period from nine weeks to four weeks, okay. that restrict the time that a voter can request and return an absentee ballot application. Right. It requires that a voter have a photo identification or some other form of identification that they're willing to surrender in order to participate in the absentee ballot um, process. What else? It eliminates over 300 hours of drop box availability. Okay, it what bans else? Nearly, it bans nearly all out of precinct votes. Is that everything? It, no, it is not. <laughs> no, sir. It restricts the hours of operation. Instead of those hours being from 7 to 7, they're now from 9 to 5, which may have an effect on voters who cannot vote during business hours on, during early voting. It limits the... Okay, I get the idea. I get the idea. It's so cathartic to watch a person who actually knows what she's talking about school these bad faith goons. Kennedy and his ilk weren't expecting such a detailed response because they're so encased in their right-wing bubble. They're used to dealing with their fellow MAGA weirdos. The hardest questions they're ever exposed to are, you work so hard, how do you do it? Also, my favorite part of that clip is that his only comeback is what else? He's like a guy who repeatedly gets dunked on during a pickup game and says, that all you got? And then after you score 21 unanswered points on him and he's limping off the court, he says, I get the idea. 
And then this week, the GOP continued hitting home runs with some more low lights ahead of today's House vote on admitting D.C. as a state. Now, as we've explained before, admitting D.C. is one of many steps necessary to rebalance a democracy tilted heavily in favor of small, rural, and disproportionately white states. D.C. has zero senators with a population of nearly 700,000 people, which is more than the state of Wyoming, which has two senators, the same number of senators as California, a state that has 39 million people. Hell, at any given time, there are more people stuck in traffic on the 405 than there are in Wyoming. Hey, Fred, speaking of the 405, you want to give us a little bit of the Californians? You didn't, you didn't record that either? Do we have anything else we can play? I told you guys I didn't want to hear that again, and yet I'm the one who set it up. It's like I'm working against my own interests. <laughs> now I'm chagrined. <laughs> then today, Kentucky Congressman James Comer claimed to know what this whole D.C. statehood thing is really about. Let's be clear what H.R. 51 is all about. It's about Democrats adding two new progressive U.S. senators to push a radical agenda championed by the squad to reshape America into the socialist utopia they always talk about. Yeah, and we wouldn't want some sort of socialist utopia with ridiculous ideas like health care for all, green energy, free college, and a $15 minimum wage. I mean, how long is this bill anyway? 14 pages, and we're supposed to read that in what, one night? These guys talk about the so-called socialist utopia as if it was a bad thing when polls repeatedly show that the core ideas of what progressives are actually proposing are overwhelmingly popular with voters. In fact, that's why they're opposed to rebalancing our democracy, because if we do, those popular ideas have a much better chance of becoming a law. Republicans are like substitute teachers who threaten to punish their class by putting on a movie instead of continuing with the lesson plan. Look, if you guys don't want to learn fractals, then I'll have no choice but to make you watch Amadeus on Laserdisc. And looking at the back here, it says there's adult language and brief nudity. Okay, I'm not seeing a lot of hands for fractals. Of course, it won't shock you to learn that Republicans don't actually have any convincing principled arguments against D.C. statehood because there aren't any. They act like there have been exactly 50 states in the Union since 1776, which obviously isn't the case. In fact, rural states have done the same thing throughout history to grow their own political power. In 1889 and 1890, Congress added North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Washington, Idaho, and Wyoming, the largest admissions of states since the original 13. The addition of 12 new senators and 18 new electors to the Electoral College was a deliberate strategy of late 19th century Republicans to stay in power after their swing toward big business cost them a popular majority. The strategy paid dividends deep into the future. Indeed, the admission of so many rural states back then helps to explain GOP control of the Senate today, 130 years later. Exactly, you think the framers envisioned not one, but two Dakotas when they wrote the Constitution? Those dorks barely knew where the Dakotas were. Back then, they just rode one horse until it died and then hitchhiked onto another one. And that only got you to West Boston. And back then, West Boston was not a neighborhood you wanted to get lost in. Bro, bro, you lost? I'm not lost, I'm Benjamin Franklin, and I was born here. I don't know you, bro. You live here now? No, I uh, moved to Philadelphia. Oh, you moved to Philly, all right, bro. I'm gonna need your waistcoat and your knee breeches. I invented electricity. Well, I invented, I don't care. <laughs> Where were we? All right, present day. In fact, Republicans have so few legitimate arguments that last month during a hearing on the D.C. statehood bill, Congressman Jody Heiss, who incidentally is the Trump-backed candidate for Secretary of State in Georgia, running on the big line that the state was stolen from Trump, made this absolutely ludicrous argument. Under this bill, D.C. would in fact become the first among states which is exactly what our founders sought to avoid. D.C. would be the only state, the only state without an airport, without a car dealership, without a capital city, without a landfill, without even a name on, on its own, and we could go on and on and on. It's hard to know where to even begin with that. A full list of fact checks would be at least 14 pages long. We can't do that because then it would take Marjorie Taylor Greene an entire day to read it. First of all, there are car dealerships in D.C. You don't need to be like a geography genius to know that little tidbit. Just look for one of those goofy tube men flapping his arms on the side of the road. Of course, if this moron ever saw one of those guys, he'd probably think it was a distressed motorist. You need a ride, man? Hop in the back. I'm listening to this new recording of Glory Days. Uh, all right. Uh, oh yeah. They'll, uh, pass you by. <laughs> Second, DC does have a name, right? I mean, when you go on kayak, there's not an option to stay at hotels near the National Mall and you know where. 
Trump himself has thankfully gone, but as we've seen yet again this week, both the ideology and performance of Trumpism are still very much at the core of the modern GOP. They've spent the last few days trotting out incredibly dumb lies about everything from D.C. statehood to voting rights to the Green New Deal, and yet no matter how many times they miss, they won't stop taking... This has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.